I'm Bill Flores and I'm happy to represent Texas District 17. I'm sending this video to our friends back in Texas uh, so that you'll understand what's been happening here in Washington DC with all the conversations about continued resolutions and budget cuts and things like that. But first of all, let me give you a little bit of background. First of all, please remember the Republicans in the House of Representatives only control one of three levels, three levers of government. We control the House of Representatives. Harry Reid and the Democrats control the Senate. President Obama, of course, is our president and sits in the White House. He can veto the legislation that's passed by us in the House, by the Congress. As a result of that, we can't control everything that we'd like to do in this country. We are doing our best to get our country back on a path to prosperity. The next thing I want to talk about is the budget. Remember, in 2011, the 111th Congress passed no budget at all. In addition to that, they didn't pass any of their normal appropriations bills. And normally, a Congress would come in, the 112th Congress would come in, and we would work on the 2012 budget, and then we would work on 2012 appropriations. But we were left with a, a mess dumped in our lap from the 111th Congress that passed no budget and only passed a continued resolution to, to fund the government through March of 2011. So it's with that backdrop that we're trying to go forward and put the country back on the right path. Also, there's one other thing I want to talk about in terms of 1995 versus 2011 because many, many people all over the country have said, shut the government down. Use this ultimate tool to be able to force the Senate and force the President to do what you want them to do. The problem is that this is not, not 1995. In 1995, the Congress had already passed several appropriations bills, including most importantly, a defense appropriation bill, which meant that when the government shut down in 1995, when President Clinton and Congress got into a, a conflict, our military men and women still got paid. In 2011, the situation is much, much different. Every single discretionary dollar that's being spent today is inside this short-term continuing resolution, which means salaries for our military men and women, fuel for our jet planes, border patrol agents, even air traffic controllers. Nobody would get paid except for President and the Congress under this uh, government shutdown scenario. That is not acceptable. Again, please remember, this is not 1995. There's also a lot of misinformation out there today. And I want you to think about who you're hearing the information from. You've heard several talking heads, including some of my Republican colleagues in this Congress, that have gotten up and talked on TV about what they would and wouldn't do or what they think Speaker Boehner should or should not have done. But please look, what, what is, do those people have another goal? Are they running for public office in a higher position? Is there an ulterior objective? So think about that. Also, please remember the media is not, necessar not necessarily always the friends of conservatives or Republicans in Congress. And then the last thing is, is that the media always loves a good fight because it, start, it helps sell newspapers or sell more TV time. And so if the media can show that the Republicans are fracturing and the conservatives are not getting along or that we're not on the same page, then that helps the media create hype. And that's the, the, the source of a lot of this misinformation. And I'm here to give you the facts tonight. First of all, here are the facts about the continued resolution. Remember, we only control one lever. When John Boehner sat down with Harry Reid and with President Obama, he was only one of three people at the table. And there was no way that he was going to get everything he wanted. And I'm surprised he got what he did. But here's what we got. When we passed the, the continued resolution today, we kept the government open and we paid our troops through the end of this fiscal year. Now, some people are really mad about the fact that it passed. But if you're in my shoes and you start getting calls from parents, men and women in Afghanistan, or from the spouse of a soldier in Iraq, and they're worried about their next paycheck, I'd urge you to think about how important is it, it, is it to use your military men and women as a pawn? And that's what President Obama and Harry Reid decided to do. 
and that changed the calculus to a great extent in this fight. So even with that backdrop, we got 40, or excuse me, 39 billion dollars in cuts and for the rest of this fiscal year compressed over a five month period. So those are deep meaningful cuts in discretionary spending versus what we versus the spending rate that we were spending in 2010. So we cut almost $40 billion, the single largest cut in discretionary spending, of, of non-defense discretionary spending since World War II. $40 billion cut over a period of five to six months in this fiscal year. The biggest single cut in discretionary spending. That's the facts. Now, the media has tried to portray, is it uh, outlays versus uh, appropriations, things like that. If we use a level measuring tape, which is what we've been trying to do, it's $39 billion. Now, if you want to measure it against something else, you can measure it against what the President initially asked for in his 2011 budget. He asked for $1.128 trillion to spend in fiscal 2011. What we're going to spend this year in discretionary spending is $78 billion less than the President's request. So. You can look at it, we spent $78 billion less versus his request, or $39 billion less versus the, the way we were spending money in 20, 2010. Either way, I think we did a good job for Americans. The other thing is, we set up a, a mechanism so that the Senate would have to vote up or down on Obamacare and voting to defund Planned Parenthood. Unfortunately, the Senate voted today, and given that we don't control that body, they voted down both of those provisions. I wish they would have voted those provisions the way that we did in the House. We did get one key thing uh, in terms of values, uh, ideological values, and that is, is that there's no federal funding for ab abortion in Washington, D.C. And so that's a win in my view. We're saving lives. The, but I want to look forward from here. I. We got in a fight over the last three months to talk about the last part of 2011. That's not why I came to Congress, is to clean up the mess that was left in our lap from the last Congress. I came to Congress because I want all of our kids and grandkids to have the same opportunities that you and I had when we were growing up. And the President's budget, which shows these deficits on this, or these federal deaths on this curve is not going to provide the future that we want. On the, on the other hand, as I said, I don't want to talk about the, what we're doing for the next five months here. I want to talk about the next 70 years. And the Republicans on the House Budget Committee, and I'm happy to be a member of that, have come up with a new Republican budget. And in this new Republican budget, you can see that we stop the endless increases in debt as you see on this green curve. And we begin to put the debt on a path toward being retired. Now, it takes longer than I'd like. It takes longer than you'd like. The problem is, is that Obama and the Democrats have gone out in the last few years with the federal credit card, and they've run up $6 trillion of federal debt. And it's gonna take a while to pay that off. And that we have huge obligations for Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid that we're proposing to fix in this new budget. But it takes time to do that. I want to say we've got two choices to look forward to. I mean, people can be upset with me over the continuing resolution vote, but I came to Washington to create a difference for America over the next 70 years, not over the next five months. We've got two clear choices. We can take Obama's odyssey toward oblivion in this budget, which creates trillions of dollars of additional debt and deficit spending, or we can have a path toward prosperity as we proposed in the Ryan plan or the House Budget Committee uh, plan that we're talking about today. And I don't know about you, but the path that I want to go is the path to prosperity. Because I ran to provide, to restore America's promise and prosperity and security for future generations. And that's what I intend to do. And Last, before I close, like I said, I'd ask you to continue to pray for our country during these difficult times and for our military men and women who sacrifice daily to protect us. Thank you.